everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm super excited. <laughs> um, I have been hinting at this video for a little bit and we're gonna be combining two of my loves, which is writing and astrology. I know, I'm one of those people now, I'm so sorry. I was very much inspired by Books and Lala's reading like an Aries because she's an Aries and I was like, oh my gosh, no one has done writing like a astrology sign yet. And I was like, oh, I could do that. I like astrology. But what I'll be doing. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Sagittarius because I am Sagittarius. I was born in literally like the last 30 minutes of Sagittarius. And fun fact, um, for the past couple of years, my birthday, even though when I was born in 1993, December 21st was in Sagittarius territory. Uh, the past couple of years, it's been in Capricorn territory. So I can't even celebrate my birthday in my astrology sign. <laughs> because I was born so late in Sagittarius. I also have a lot of Capricorn in my chart, so it's totally good. I'll pop up my birth chart if you're interested. So my idea for the video is that I'm going to be taking Sagittarius buzzwords or things that describe what a Sagittarius is. And I'm gonna be using those words as prompts for my writing or for ways in which I will be doing my writing. So for example, some things that describe Sagittarius are optimism, travel, education, philosophy, religion, nature loving, contemplation, expansion, honesty, and spontaneity. And I have little ideas for all of those words that are going to help me start, you know, brainstorming and outlining my next why thriller i'm really excited about thank you sarah for the perfect project name which is going to be project pyro <laughs> i'm going to call that as a working title for now and that is what i'm going to be working on just real quick before we hop into the video i want to give you a book recommendation if you're into astrology this is the best one i've read astrology using the wisdom of the stars in your everyday life by carol taylor very user-friendly but still complex like i would say it's okay for beginners and people that are pretty like moderate into reading astrology or birth charts or whatever it's really fun i like it i recommend it I'm sitting here and I've been trying to picture this book as like a movie in my head like the main character in her house moving around doing daily things and the interactions between her and the people that live with her and through kind of going through those dialogue moments in my head I feel like I've learned a lot more about my characters so this has been just <laughs> great actually. I also have been slowly working through this huge character questionnaire. I know a lot of people don't prefer those but I like them because I think they always spark ideas for me. Like for example one of the questions was does your main character wear a piece of jewelry that has like a certain significance to them and the answer to that is no but I started thinking and I was like oh my main character wears a choker. Why does she wear that choker? Not because it's important to her but maybe it hides a scar that she has um, and that scar has a significance so it's things like that that kind of get the you know your mind rolling anyways i've been making a lot of progress with this book i'm just the more that i work on it the more excited i get about it i think it's gonna be good like i can see it for its potential like the final draft <laughs> and i'm like ooh, if i can do that if i can work hard if i can like push myself like this book could be it folks it could be it okay so I just got a package and it's perfect to open for this video. I am so excited for this. I owe a big thank you to Kristen Leatherman who showed these to me. Oh my gosh. I got new glasses chains. Now I have rose gold with actual rose quartz crystals in it. And like, it's perfect for this video because it's got little moons. They're like the perfect little astrology glasses chains. Look at that, how cute. If you're interested in getting one of these for your own, they have a, like a lot of different types of colors and crystals. This is the artist card. You can go check her out. Okay, moment of truth.
I love it so much. Oh my gosh. Which level 100. Okay, I'm excited for this next part of the video. If you guys ever watched Books and Lala's video that I was talking about, she not only reads like an Aries, she goes through on like Instagram and Pinterest and finds out like drinks and clothes and books. And I was like, oh my gosh. I'm gonna do that. Tropical Lava Flow Frappuccino. I don't like the idea of tropical and coffee mixed together. That doesn't sound like me. Raspberry Cheesecake Frappuccino. Okay, like the only thing about all of these is that I'm not a big sweet drink person. Ooh, this one for Sagittarius. Mango Dragon Fruit Starbucks Refresher. Wild at heart. Well, that might be good. That doesn't sound like if it's a refresher, it won't be that sweet, hopefully. What's this one say? Mango dragon fruit Starbucks refresher. Okay, that's two that say that. So maybe, maybe that's what I should order. I think I'm gonna stick with the dragon fruit refresher. That still kind of like gets the whole traveling to a tropical far off place vibe, but doesn't sound too, too sweet. The signs as sandwiches. A Reuben. Ooh, I do love a good Reuben sandwich though. And now, I don't know how this is gonna work, but I'm going to look up outfits and see <laughs> if I have something in my closet that's very sagittarius -y. So this is a little bit darker than what I normally go for. So that will be interesting. Fall vibes, lounge, like, yes, I get it. The Coraline, I love it. I love this aesthetic, but it's not really my aesthetic. Like I say all the time, my aesthetic is like Persephone, like the Greek goddess, right? Because she likes the darkness and like she's the queen of the underworld basically, but she's also the goddess of like spring and rebirth and flowers. So like, I like to wear the floral stuff on the outside, but on the inside, it is the dark and the grunge and all that. Okay, this is a little bit more my speed. I think I could definitely pull something like this off. Okay, I'm pretty sure um, this Sagittarius right here, I'm pretty sure I have that exact outfit. Like, uh, let me take a picture of that. <laughs> because I, yeah, I, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> I found the outfit and I threw on this leather jacket with it because like, I just felt like that was the Sagittarius vibe, right? Um, But the thing is, you know, this like, <sighs> this just isn't Lindsay. Um, maybe a part of me. <laughs> but not like deeply who I am. I'm much more like witchy forest flower witch. This, this is a little bit too biker chick for me, I think. Ooh, this looks very fancy. We both decided to get drinks based on our zodiac signs. So for me, as you saw, it was a dragon drink or dragon fruit because Sagittarius like to travel and dragon fruit is tropical. The Scorpio over here got the passion fruit guava something that's what he got because scorpios are passionate you know to passion to passion tonight that's tonight. from the adams family we'll have to edit that out because that sounds too sexual <laughs> here we go cheers to my health mine's quite good not too sweet did you child. I can't take you I anywhere. I talk about it. Can I try yours? Oh wow. That's good. This is you. It's a little sour like you. I'm just a touch bit sweet. <laughs> Does that mean you don't like me? You like it better than mine? Well yeah. It's just <laughs> dull. No flavor. Not even sweet. Maybe. Yeah. Are you saying I'm dull with no flavor and not even sweet? We're getting divorced on camera. Also for the occasion, I wore my space mask. And then, <laughs> you are such a Scorpio, stop checking yourself out. I got a haircut tomorrow, okay, uh, don't worry about it. I mean, that is also it, that, it does look good, but I mean at the same time. That Leo Mars coming out. It's not brushed. He's like, oh, I'm so handsome. I, just, I can't stand you. Okay, back to the content. We went and got sandwiches based off of that picture that was like, what sandwich you would be based on your Zodiac sign. So we got sandwiches. Mine was a Reuben. Ryan's is a Philly cheesesteak with beef because Scorpios just have beef with everyone, so it makes sense. <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean. But why would mine be a Reuben? Like corned beef, like sauerkraut? I don't get it. Cheers! Did the article guess you right? Where are you going? 
I'm, I need to be alone with this. But for real though, why did he low-key leave me? There's so much sauerkraut on this. I'm gonna have so much gas. So can I have your best guess as to why corned beef is for Sagittarius? Cause you guys' beef is corny. <laughs> That's why I don't compare to Scorpios. I just keep thinking like, what can I do for spontaneity? Like Sagittarius are spontaneous. <laughs> I don't think I should have to plan being spontaneous. <laughs> but that's my Capricorn coming out as well. So I was just sitting there thinking and I was like, what if I just, what if I just do a tag video? Like, let's just not even think about it. Let's sit down and let's talk about this new project in a spontaneous video. So that's what I'm gonna do. actually did quite a few master classes. I did them over the period of a week because I had a free trial. Thanks and shout out to my girl Camille Myrick for the one week free trial. It was amazing. But I ended up taking most of Dan Brown's class and a couple of David Baldacki's classes because I just wanted to see what like you know very successful thriller writers have to say about their process and i really rather enjoyed it one of my favorite quotes from the class was from dan brown and he said your job as a writer is to give the reader what they want in a way that they don't see coming they also both gave little tips about um you know making more suspense and more urgency in your book which as someone also writing a thriller and that being something that i am concerned about this was really helpful so for example withholding information like literally locking things away like encrypted codes or like treasure hunt things or using flashback to create suspense like tell the end of the story at the beginning and then the whole time the reader is reading the book they're trying to figure out how we got here and like what things are going to lead to this big explosion thing at the end. I really also like when Dan Brown said he would, whatever time frame that he outlined the book to be for, he would always challenge himself to cut it in half. So if he was writing a book that was gonna take two days, he tried to do it in one day. And I was like, ooh, I like that, that sounds fun. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of this stuff was really more just like their personal opinions or like 101 writing type stuff. But there were a few little nuggets that I think inspired ideas for my book so i i really appreciate it and i'm glad i got to take a couple of these courses i have a surprise for you guys are you ready boom okay well goodbye for now i really kind of struggled with coming up with an idea for philosophy but then i thought well what if i just had a quick little chat with you guys about the reasons why I'm writing this book. I really feel like there are two reasons I'm writing this, um, other than the fact that it has a lot of tropes and fun stuff that I just really enjoy reading about. I mean like deeply <laughs> why I'm writing this book. I really just want a disabled teenage girl to feel seen. I never had a book like this when I was a teenager. I never got to see myself represented in a book. I think that Disabled Lit is still incredibly far behind. There has not been a big own voices breakout novel that I'm aware of um, for disability. And that's really sad. There's been breakout novels about disability with disabled characters. I'm thinking mainly of like The Fault in Our Stars. There's been Jojo Moy's You and Me or Me and You or <laughs> whatever about the guy in the wheelchair and the girl falling in love with him. Uh, these are not on Voices novels. There's not been an actual disabled writer writing a book about a disabled character that... Are we okay, Wiener? I think my cat just caused like an avalanche in the closet. Oh well, that's a problem for 15 minutes later, Lindsay. And as for the second one, it gets a little bit, I don't even know, mushy? Is, is that the best word for it? I don't know. Um, I just feel like this is what I'm supposed to do in the simplest terms. Like I, this is my superpower. I write, this is how I change the world. Like you guys know I'm disabled. Um, so volunteering 
is hard for me. Uh, your girl's also broke <laughs> because of medical bills and student loans and you know all that kind of fun stuff. So giving money a lot of times really isn't an option for me. Uh, and that's really sad because the world kind of sucks. And I'd like to be able to do something to make it better. I think that a lot of people feel that way. Like your point in life is to better yourself and the world. Um, so, you know, th this is how I help. This is how I make a difference. I write books. I, I show stories that are underrepresented and um, hopefully change lives. Like that's that's what I want to do. I want some kid to pick up my book one day and be like, wow, I've never read anything like this. Wow, I've never seen myself in a book. And then, you know, it will all be worth it. <laughs> the hundreds of rejections and hours of breakdowns and everything. It's like, it's worth it for that one reader, right? So I don't, I don't know. I, this is just, I feel like, <laughs> woo woo, here we go. But I feel like this is what I was meant to do. Like, I feel like if you believe in paths, if you believe in fate or destiny, like this is mine. This is what I'm meant to do. This is very much something that feels right to me. And I'm very confident and assured that this is my path in a way that I am not with a lot of other things in my life. It's like, I know. <laughs> I was put on this earth to be a writer. Okay, woo woo time over. <laughs> so another thing about Sagittarius, we're optimistic, okay? I don't know if that's really me. I mean, come on, I am such a Debbie Downer. <laughs> no, this is definitely one side of Sagittarius that I very much identify with. I'm just like very optimistic in general. Um, I like to stay hopeful. I like to stay positive. I'm still a realist in a lot of ways. Again, have a lot of Capricorn in my chart. We're very grounded and very real. But at the same time, like I can still be happy and positive about the things that I know are real. But for optimism, I thought that I would kind of chat about some of my hopes and dreams for Project Pyro. These are lofty, but that's okay. I'm being optimistic. And dreams, we're having dreams, people. <laughs> I want it to be my breakout YA. YA scares me. Um, I've been writing middle grade. I started out writing YA and then I transferred to middle grade. Middle grade has my heart. I'm on submission right now with my first middle grade book and I love it and like that's where I want to make my home and like the base of my career but you know I still I still do love YA even though it scares the crap out of me like it's so cutthroat in YA and it's intimidating but I think that Project Pyro could possibly being optimistic here. It will be my breakout YA novel. I do feel like it is the most marketable book idea that I have ever come up with, which is a good sign. Um, obviously, I have to make the writing match the commercial aspect of the book, but I feel really positive about it. I think it has a very strong message that's very relevant in today's conversations in society. So I feel like, you know, it could do its thing. I also feel like this is the perfect bridge book between my middle grade projects and the YA books that I would like to publish. Like I said, I'm on submission right now with my contemporary fantasy book. I have a second one written that's in first draft form that I'm kind of taking a break from right now. And uh, that one is a fantasy as well. It's just a smidge bit darker. And then moving into Project Pyro, it is a lot darker. But I think they all carry along the same message, which is like self-acceptance, not caring what others think about you, especially when it comes to like your marginality. You just like, even if the world doesn't accept you, you have to accept yourself. Okay, kind of going off, getting big and like being my breakout novel. I think it would be so cool if this book got big on Twitter or TikTok. I do not have TikTok, I refuse because everyone I know that has TikTok is like addicted and I do not need more things to be addicted to. But I know what TikTok and Twitter can do for your book, especially TikTok. Like those, there's books that haven't been talked about for years and then somehow they get big on TikTok and now they're on like the New York Times bestseller list like all over again and they're selling like tens of thousands of copies more so now than they did when they were originally like debuting. That would be super cool to be viral. Go big or go home. Come on, we're being optimistic. I want a Netflix miniseries of this book. I think that would be so perfect. Like a limited series, one season of this book. I just like, mm, I feel like it would do really well. I think thrillers in general do really well on Netflix when they're just like a mini series. And last but not least, this is a dream for all of my books, not just specifically this one, but I just want to be in an owl crate box so bad. 
Like, so bad. I think that's my number one dream. Like, I would rather be in an Outcrate box than, like, hit the New York Times bestseller list. Or, like, the USA Today. I know that's stupid. But, like, <laughs> I really want to be in an Outcrate box. That means so much to me. Another great thing about Sagittarius is that we love to travel. And it just so happened that me and my husband are getting a cabin in the woods for the weekend to celebrate like being together for nine years. So I thought I would take you guys along with us and uh, do some travel writing. trip and I'm very sad. I seriously could have done another like two days in that cabin. It was so wonderful. So <laughs> what I've learned from writing like a Sagittarius, it's really interesting because all of this stuff worked for me. I feel like I was more productive with you know brainstorming, outlining, just getting new ideas, sparking new ideas more so than normal. But I don't feel like any of this stuff is necessarily new. Is it working for me because I'm a Sagittarius and I already do this? Or was it working for me because I wasn't doing this and these types of things are perfect for a Sagittarius, therefore it would work perfect for my creative style. So out of all of the buzzwords I adapted to make work for this experiment, I am trying to figure out which one was actually the most helpful. I think contemplation was really good, just like sitting down and thinking about my story and my characters, seeing it in my head, like a movie, that was wonderful. I also think the travel was really perfect because going to that cabin, the town that the cabin was in was really similar to the town that I have set my main character living in. Um, it's like a lots of hills and forests and farmland and like trailer parks and then every now and then there'll be like a really nice housing development that's like kicking out all of the trailer parks and so like all the poor people have nowhere to go. Now I feel like when I need to go in there and describe the setting I'll be able to do that like you know a lot better now. Also this is not at all writing related but just going on that hike was just so invigorating. And I know probably a lot of people feel that way, but maybe it's just my Sag vibes coming out, but just a good long hike in the woods, like really just gets your creative juices flowing. Like I just feel renewed and refreshed. Ah, oh, it's so nice. And now I have the hiking bug. I already loved hiking and going on walks and stuff, but now I'm just like, I'm ready to hike the Appalachian Trail, man. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making it. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I would love to make this a series. So let me know down in the comments uh, what sign you would like me to write like next. I will pick the sign with either the highest amount of comments or like thumbs up at the bottom. So yeah, please vote. <laughs> let me know if you want me to do this again. And like, let me know if you identify with your sun sign. Like if that's something that 
you feel like makes sense in your life if not have you looked at your whole birth chart like do you maybe identify more with your moon sign or your rising sign but thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye